Everything was pointing to a Bab and Rovers defeat today at Carrow Road as they took on promotion chasing high flyers. Premier League bound Norwich City, but guess what? Tony Mowbray had other plans. Right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time, looking back at Blackburn Rovers' latest match out of the championship up against, of course, Norwich City at their place. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. If you're new to the channel, stop what you're doing, swallow what you're doing, smash the old subscribe that you bang out today with all things Blackburn Rovers' latest championship play. Whoa, football day, we're going to go here. Under Warrowski, that's right, of course, the, the rest of the championship world all thought this was a nailed on home win. But if, even me, even me to a point, but I thought something down there would see this going a little bit hopefully in favour of Rose and guess what we turned up today unfortunately we could if there was maybe another five minutes left of the clock we could have taken home all three points but we have to settle for just the point that's right folks 1-1 one, one in the end as Batman Rovers came to Norwich a car road and got themselves a, 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 a well earned share of the spoils of course 1-1 one, one in the end final score despite going behind through a 53rd minute strike by Kenny McLean who are uh, yeah, I, I thought it was against the wind, against the, the run of play, and I thought Rovers were a little bit unjust to be going behind uh, in this match. Well, I think we had a decent strong half, of course. Ultimately, I think yeah, Norwich, Norwich played okay, and of course, showing their quality and strengths whenever, whenever of course, the Finnish assassin had a, had a, a strike on goal. It looked uh, like a clinical strike on goal. But uh, fortunately for us, we had the difference maker in this team. And that was Thomas, Belgium international, Kaminsky between the sticks. That's right. Uh, keeping us in this game. And unfortunately, it, it can't come away with a clean sheet. But guess what? We came away with the next best thing. And that is a point uh, piece on this one. Of course, Sam Gallagher leveled for us on the 77th minute with a headed goal. That's right. Set piece as well. We don't score many of those. But when we do, they count for big time. Uh, so 1-1 one, one in the end. Sam Gallagher leveled. And of course, uh, in all honesty, I think a fair result is 1-1. One, one, but Ultimately, I think we do. I feel a little bit robbed. I think I feel a little bit robbed. I thought we should have had all three points out of this one. Uh, even though the stats do favour Norwich, I think we were had we were equal to them. There was there were spells in the game that they were, of course, clinical and they, they were a little bit hard done by a couple of couple of. Uh, I think the woodwork was hit twice by Norwich in the first half. Not clinical strikes though. They were deflections. So you know you got to you got to give humongous credit for Blackburn Rovers uh, back four today. They uh, especially the centre pairing. Uh, well, I think I think we've got a recipe here Moby. I think we have a recipe here for the future if you are here if you're here for the future and you can do what you've done today this season if you can keep Kaminsky between the six and you can bring Harwood Bellis back for another season I think you've got the answer I think you've got the bloody answer uh with with your centre-back pairing of course and then you, you just need to put in the other ingredients you, you pick your pickering on the left sort out the right back I don't know what you're going to do with that and then build further forward of course but anyway let's take a look at of course the starting I'll take a look at the stats in a little bit more detailed of course this was the host on this one, crawl between sticks, get an anonymous at left back. Gibson and Hanley made up their centre back pair in there. Of course, Aaron's at right back. McLean, the goal scorer there, of course, alongside Skip. But when there was, of course, pulling the strings, Dowell, Campwell, and of course, Pookie up top. Of course, Campwell knocking on the door for the old English scene a couple of years back when they were in the Premier League. But when they, of course, uh, knocking on the door for maybe even a Premier League, move to a top top four, top six Premier League club, you know, just don't know. And of course, Pookie knows where the back of the net is. Of course, he's been scoring for fun this season. Uh, of course, X Row, of course, Hanley between six alongside a six-fingered banjo playing weirdo that is Gibbo of course as for the ho uh, the visitors though it was Kaminsky between the sticks to uh, Douglas at left back better performance from him but not really not really stellar yet I'm still waiting still waiting and I don't, I don't think we'll ever see it uh, Lennon and Howard Bellis were tremendous we'll take a look at my match range in a minute of course wrecking at right back uh, over the likes of Nayambi Holtby Evans and Rothwell went up a, a midfield three which which was I thought was was creative it was buzzing it was it, it was involved uh, however the forward three was a little bit dire with Brereton, Buckley, and uh, Dolan. I think they were a little bit uh, they were a little bit uh, manhandled by by the likes of Hanley and Gibbo, and of course their uh, their their grit in midfield. Um, Okay, but you've got to realistically look at that top three. You've got to look at you've got to look at that top three there. Of course, we've spent money on Brereton, bringing a, a young, tall, uh, possible striker, the probably a future Rovers uh, uh, goal scoring machine. Once we can get him into the into the team where he plays, but the, the other the other two additions, they're young guys. There, they're, they're not they're not experienced he uh, heavyweights that have been around for five or six years. These are young, raw talents that are still trying to uh, uh, get acclimatized to playing week in week out at second tier English football. It 
it is when you look at the, the, the grand scheme of things, you know, Lennon, Academy player, Ranking Casello, Academy player. Of course, Holtby, Evans and Rothwell were brought in and, and for, for for various uh, over various seasons, of course. You know, there's not much money spent on that midfield uh, on transfer fees. But to be fair, it's a quite a young core team. And like I said, if we could keep these three guys right here next season, I think that is a core. That's a core for uh, success. I think these two guys have got a brilliant understanding already. I think if Mowbray should get on the phone right now to Pep and say, you know what, son, let's let's extend this deal for another 12 months. I think we've got something here, uh, especially for our own success and his own benefit. And then, of course, you can have Ayala and you can bring in maybe maybe Water. And he probably won't even have to touch too much of that centre-back uh, uh, centre uh, department. Uh, maybe bring in another one. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Pickering already sorted on the left-hand side, the rank, uh, the right-hand side. It could be Rankin Castellas if he wants it, or Nyambi if you nail it down, or maybe you can explore uh, other, other options for that fit. And then, of course, the, these trio are all potentially going to be leaving the club unless some contract situation sort itself out. Um, are we better off with them or without them? I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look at the match ratings. That'll give you maybe a bit of an indication. Kaminsky, man of the match. Absolutely incredible saves. Again, called up fairly in my eyes after that performance uh, to the Belgian international scene. He'll be going uh, playing for, for Belgium. He might not get game time, of course. They've got some uh, some other uh, goalkeepers ahead of him in the ranks. But guess what? Just to be a part of that will give him the, the motivation to succeed and strive even further. And hopefully he won't get distracted. He won't get side barred next season. And I think if Mowbray has any indication or or whatever. You don't want to get left shortchanged once again uh, by players the likes of, of Armstrong, the likes of, of Nyambi, where the contracts get dwindled. I'd be on him. Uh, he's only got a contract till next season, end of next season, I think. So get that tapped up uh, for another couple of years at the very least. Meanwhile, Douglas, uh, better, but not really clinical. Lennon was a seven, maybe an eight. Uh, Howard Bellis with an eight. Maybe I got them the wrong way round, I think. I think uh, I think I did get them the wrong way round. So let's let's uh, go into that and let's change that sort of a bitch. I thought Howard Bellis was good, but of course, Lennon was immense. Uh, I did have them the wrong way around. Uh, so let's get out of that. So that's what we can do on add on the fly. Uh, Reiki is with the seven again. It was good. He was lively down this right side. We had a lot of joy. Um, I think Giannano has got himself uh, he got injured and he had to be pulled. So they had to. They had. A, a, it was a weakness that we identified, but Reiki Sala stood up and be counted. Of course, Hobby with a six. Evans with an eight. I thought he was phenomenal as well. And again, steps up to the plate when you need him the most. He steps up. Rothwell with a seven as well. He has some some driving moments as well. Up front, I wasn't too impressed with these guys. To be fair, uh, lacking goals, lacking belief. It took the master stroke of Mowbray, bringing Elliott and, of course, Gallagher uh, with goals that uh, that, uh, that turned the game in, in our favour and, of course, got us a point at the end of it. Take a look at them stats then, shall we? Of course, uh, possession went in favour of the host, 54.8% possession for them, 452 for us, which shows, you know, we don't have to have all the ball all the bloody time. Uh, pass success rate was in favour of the host again, 83% for them, 80% for us. As for the shots, they had 16 compared to 11. Uh, we won the aerial duels, which was great to see and had more tackles on the ground. They had more corners than us, but guess what? We uh, converted with our set-piece opportunity. Um, as for the uh, other bits and pieces, they had 692 touches to our 593. Also 482 passes for them, 392 for us. Uh, they hit the woodwork twice, I believe. It doesn't show it on this graphic, but they did. Um, I, I saw it with my own bloody eyes. Um, but uh, to be all, all honesty, you can look and throw all the stats at you. You've got to give credit to Kaminsky and the back, the centre back pairing for Rovers. They were the 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 the. the the, the match winners, or not, even though the, the game wasn't won either side, but the, the guys that come out of it, can't come out of this smelling of roses will be Kaminsky and Lenehan and Howard Bellis. And that's what we need to do, because I think I think Rovers' performances at the back have been more composed uh, since Howard Bellis has taken over the reins of Branthwaite and, of course, uh, the other guys that, that, that took up that role before him. You have Addy Johnson, so you have, you have, of course, you have Derek Williams, who's now sunning up in LA uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So, so ultimately, I think we've got the, the building box, the foundations are there and again uh let me talk about my points per match ratio for of course tony Moby. we want to get 1.84 this now brings us back level on target for what we, we want to achieve at the end of the season it doesn't get easier though it doesn't get easier with a lot more games needing to be won by blackburn rovers and of course tony Moby to make sure that we achieve that 1.84 points per tally game of 64 points at the end of the season which will better last season's points tally of 63 and no it's not going to convince a lot of the haters out there and a lot of the people that are already resigned to to Moby going, but for me, I think uh, if if we're going, it's a it's a been a strange old year. I've just realised this past week that we or you guys.
guys, the, the guys locally, are not going to see Harvey Elliott wearing the blue and white halves for Blackburn Rovers. The season's going to pass us by. It will be like a, a, a dream because we won't have actually witnessed him at Ewood Park, which will be a shock, and a, not a shock, but a, a travesty for Rovers fans to see in those. And of course, Barry Douglas, to be fair, I'm not really, not really to, be, to, be, to be honest, I'm not really bothered about that one. Uh, but, you know, those kind of players, the Harwood Bellises, the, 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 the Elliots, those kind of guys. Uh, Kaminsky's, the Kaminsky's between the sticks. If he goes in the summer, goodness gracious me, we already even notice. So, yes, Roby, get it sorted. Get Kaminsky tied up. Get Mohamed Bellis back for another loan. I know you're not going to get, get, get him on a permanent deal, but he's he's shown class today. He's shown class in the past few games. Uh, if you heat that man, just like me, as you can see, Norwich, just like Rovers in the past, a lot of the ball, a lot of the possession, but ultimately, uh, you know what? I think they're going to be kicking themselves with a couple of drop points. As the Rovers will be singing all the way with, uh, ourselves back to Lancashire with that. There is no fear. There should be no fear for Mowbray at the end of this one. I think we've come away with, it, with of course, a, a valuable point. Uh, but that's what I think about the match. What about Tony himself? What did he think about the game uh, and the results for Blackburn Rovers? Um, I think so, from the effort that was put in today from the team. And yet, it was looking, you know, when they scored, they scored a great goal, to be honest, in set, stick the third runner in, rifle it in the bottom corner. It's uh, You could feel their quality, I think, even from the start when we we must have had four shots before they got out of their half, I think. It's... Um, you could still feel the quality every time they attacked, that they could pick the right pass and they could make the right run. Um, and yet over the piece, I think we did enough to not lose the game. I, I, and you know, I don't think they could have argued too much if we'd have won the game, to be honest. Yeah. Listen, with total respect, we haven't got a lot to lose. In, in my mind, we, we came here and played with a, a freedom, really. That's what I said. Listen, let's go and play on the front foot. You can come to Norwich. I've watched a lot of the games where Norwich have won nine on the bounce, and teams have come. So, not Forest midweek. It must have been 70 odd percent possession for the for Norwich because they didn't ever ask any questions. And they sat in and banked lots of men behind the ball. And a lot of teams come and bank lots of men behind the ball and try and deny them space, as we found at home sometimes to some teams. And yet, I feel our group, our team, it's best for us to go after teams and play on the front foot, try and nick it off them in their half. If they're good enough to get past us and play through us, then we have to take the consequences. Other defenders have to do their jobs. But um, but we were good today. I thought they all bought into what we were asking them to do and um, we almost came away with a win. Yeah, listen, we've been an implemented plan on the front foot all season, to be honest, and, and but a lot of teams play against us and play more direct than that. A lot of teams don't take their goal kicks into the 18-yard box against us, they push everybody up and boot it off the front and then play. So it takes the press out of the game, really. Um, why we looked so impressive at times today was that they are a brave football team that's got them to the top of the league with their possession-based system. Um, and yet it does play into our hands a little bit. It does suit the way we try and play as opposed to some teams who don't try and play and kick it off the big centre forward. So after the international break, we've got to go to Wickham. Wickham won't be playing in their own box. They will be booting it off the biggest centre forward you've ever seen and getting runners past him and getting it wide and getting it in the box. Um, so it'll be a totally different football match. Um, if anything, we're suited to play against the better teams who have a confidence about the way they play. Um, and I, I go back to the direct teams who play against us and don't play passing football from the back. We've had two 18-year-olds at some stages playing centre-half and we've had a centre midfield play centre-half and we are, it's an area of the pitch where we've had a lot of players unavailable and thus we've struggled against the directness of some teams to deal with the basic football of heading balls out of the back and yet that's, that's, that's my professional view of it really. Today was a game that suited the way we played and I thought we played pretty well. Dara's not a young player anymore, but, but Taylor's an extremely young player. Thomas is a very experienced international goalkeeper, of course, and um, made the crucial saves when he had to make them. It would have been disappointing if you know he hadn't made the save late on and we lost that 2-1 because we put a lot of effort into that game. But um, let's put the point in the bag, let's get on that coach, just do the five hours back and um, then I'll give him a few days off. And, after the international break, we, we're going to work really hard to try and win some football matches and see how many points we can accumulate. He's got a defensive instinct, is what I would say, first and foremost. He's got, he's got warrior-like attributes. He wants to win headers, he wants to win tackles, he wants to engage. He's composed enough with the ball, he's got a nice enough right foot. Um, good attributes. You know, The test for Taylor, of course, is to, to play for Manchester City, not for Blackburn Rovers, and that's his challenge in his career. Um, 
I, I think we put demands on him to, to play passes. Probably not as much demand as Manchester City will put on him. So our young centre halves out on loan, as I watch all their clips, you know, there's very little demand on like Hayden or Tyler to to deepen off, receive the ball, stick it through the lines, drop one over the top. They are really heading it and kicking it and defending and putting their bodies on the line and doing exceptionally well in the clubs that they're at. Ultimately, when they come back, they're going to have to fit into the demands of this club. Um, whilst as a centre half, you have to head it, kick it, defend. You have to be able to pick a pass to your midfield player. Why? Why would we have Stewie Downing or Harvey Elliott playing in a team if we haven't got defenders who can give them the ball? Uh, maybe, possibly. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. I think you know, in Travis Davenport, maybe potentially. I do know one or two. Corey Evans, for instance, if he's going to be involved, he's going to have to fly straight to London uh, because the games are on the Friday and he's got a game on Wednesday, and so he's not coming back till Thursday. We're travelling on Thursday to get to Wickham for a Friday game, and so it's a bit of a farce, to be honest, that international players are, are coming back the day before the game, having played three games in a in a ten-day period. We have to accept that. We'll we'll have a look and, and see how we see how it is. We obviously. Hopefully, we'll pick the team that's going to be the freshest and, and give us the best chance to win. I, I think it's an Adam played the other night. It was a calculated gamble. Me and him had a long chat about you know uh, we we thought Bristol City we would dominate the ball, we would create chances, and he and he, we decided to play him because he's a he's a brilliant finisher off both feet. Not um, he, he wasn't 100 um, percent, and I thought to uh, to bring him here five hours on a coach on a hamstring injury and then expect him to come play against the team right at the top of the table and me shouting at him to run and work, I don't think it was the right thing. So we left him at home um, and I'm pretty sure or pretty hopeful that you know after this international break he'd be ready to fire on all cylinders again. It's very strange I would say but uh, you know their World Cup qualifiers, they, um, you know the biggest tournament in the world really, the countries have to qualify, you have to to have to try and to get to the World Cup final and I'm, and I'm sure the windows of opportunities to play these games, this is it and so you we either bin the World Cup in Qatar at 2022 or we get on with these games and um, you see some countries like you know the, the German players for instance that you know would have to quarantine for 10, 10 days on the back of coming back aren't playing them games I don't think for some teams but um, yeah, listen, I've always said to you, I'm not a political animal really. I'm a football coach who tries to work with a group of players and, and they're not my decisions to make. Uh, I just think it's where the world is. Uh, you see the coronavirus numbers in, in Germany and France and Belgium skyrocketing at the moment. Obviously, they haven't rolled the vaccine out like they have in this country and it's a, it seems to be a big problem. And um, let's hope... Um, Let's hope it doesn't cause that many problems. The only problems it causes, of course, let's hope Thomas comes back fit and ready to play at Wickham. I think, you know, Corey's an issue for us having, you know, he'll play Wednesday night, he'll, he'll travel back Thursday. And will he be ready to play Friday? Probably not. And yet I've told him he should fly into Heathrow rather than into Manchester and we'll meet him at the hotel. Meanwhile, what's been going on social media? Let's take a little look there, chat. Of course, uh, Rovers Till I Die said Gallagher made a huge impact when he came on and, of course, grabbed the equaliser. What a player. Uh, talk of Ewood said Kaminsky cost just £450,000. Absolute bargain for a top class goalkeeper. As so Mike Delap, uh, the Blackburn Rovers player of the season, is Lord Thomas Kaminsky, by the way. In a sea of confusion, chopping, changing, mediocrity, and misplaced enthusiasm, he's been a beacon of consistent excellence. Just give him the bloody award now. I agree. Jordan Kingsley said Good result. Season's done, though. Roll on August. Adam Lodge said, really decent performance. JRC as some player needs signing up to a long-term deal ASAP. Robson Green, not that one. He's probably fishing, but this one with here watching Rovers. Let's give credit where it's due. Uh, this is a brilliant team performance. The top of the league and uh, they, they're top of the league and, and won nine on a bounce for a reason. Definitely gives us something to build for next season. Through Thought the skipper was different class today. Well done, lads. Meanwhile, Citizen F, 93, aka Fred. Seven points from a possible 36. One win in 12. 15th in the league. Mowbray out. Of course, it doesn't change a lot of uh, everyone else's opinions out there. Meanwhile, uh, Phil Thomas said this, said this fair result, another jung, jumbled up side, but at least with youth comes legs, able to keep up the pace. Uh, we'll keep the pace up. Remember, Jacob Minnis says, lifetime contract to Kaminsky. There he is, Tommy, Tommy Sauce there uh, for Rovers. Of course, Jordan uh, Montague said, decent point, still masks that we aren't good enough. Class from to uh, uh, Thomas Kaminsky today. Dan Cooper, best point we've had all season. Uh, meanwhile, Dougie, Dougie Meister said, play decent 
that just don't seem to trouble the keeper as much as we should, considering the number of times we push forward. Can't grumble with a point at the top of the league, though. Lennon was an animal and all. Andy Jones uh, ran their hearts out for the gaffer. Great game to watch. Deserved at least a point. Proud of the team today. Let's Lots to be uh, positive about. And, of course, Matthew Spencer. One of the best games we've played all season, indeed. And if you are new, of course, make sure you bang your subscribe to me on the old Twitter. Uh, Roverseas, of course, whatever it is. Bish, bash, bosh. That's, of course, what their fans said. What about what else went on out in the championship? Let's take a little look at it, shall we? Of course, Brentford against Forest was the early game. Ended up all square on that one. Of course, Stoke uh, did beat Derby. Of course, Derby not out of the woods yet. Rotherham also uh, picked up a big win against Bristol City. Coventry against our next opponent, of course, Wickham. Nil-nil in the end. Of course, Preston lost to Luton again, put them in a bit of trouble, and Watford kicked ass and took some name against Lee Bowyer's Birmingham. Uh, Millwall picked up a win against Bodder, of course, Sheffield Wednesday also beat Barnsley uh, to put a stop in there uh, for high-flying form, and Reading and QPR drew in the end. Let's take a look at the table as it stands. Norwich City, of course, still uh, at the top of the table. Of course, what are they now? What are they now? They're just eight points clear of Watford, who picked up a big win. Of course, Sheffield Wednesday, uh, so Swansea City have two games in hand, win both of those, and they could uh, go up as, uh, as high as second as well in the table. Uh, as for the playoffs, it is Swansea, Brentford, Barnsley and Reading make up the top six. Uh, Bournemouth have a game in hand and win that. They could go into the top six at the expense of Reading. Uh, Middlesbrough back into contention once again as uh, Cardiff might be uh, once ever that game gets the result uh, later on. Asaro is no movement for us. Bristol City though uh, also took a defeat. Luton Town moved the chains as well and Preston uh, they have yep, slipped down the, the pecking order as do Derby. It's still not out of the woods yet because Rotherham do have games in hand. That is massive of course. Uh, the likes of Coventry could get sucked into it as do Derby. You play game, one game more as well. Kicking off forward, of course, international break coming up for Rovers. Uh, we'll take on Wickham when we come back around on Good Friday. Uh, that will be at Wickham. It's a must-win game for Rovers. Of course, there's the, you know these games against Swansea, Bright, Brentford, and of course Norwich were free hits in my eyes. I didn't anticipate to lose all of them. We only lost one of them. Uh, we didn't win any of them, but uh, it's fine. Uh, we go again, but we must beat Wickham uh, on Friday the 2nd of April, of course. What else do I have here? Of course, on this one, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, you can take a look. Norwich will go against Preston uh, in the end. Uh, thanks again for Harvey who did stop by the watch along and thanks again for those guys who did join me as well. We go again folks, we go again but of course a bit of a break, bit of a chance to get some of the old uh, bodies back on the line and maybe, just maybe, we can start to rebuild the season from here. Of course, we're not anticipating much but for me, it's winning games now. We need to win some more games, get the points on the board, get away from that drop zone because it's getting a little bit tight. We're not in that but uh, at the moment but of course we need to start moving up the chains, moving the, moving the table of course. But until then, I'll be sure to get the video some love and smash the old thumbs up, smash your subscribe. We do it all again. But anyway, soon. Until then, though, I'm out.